In this section, we are going to look at how to evaluate inverse trigonometric functions. Let's consider the following problem. Find the inverse sine of the square root of 3 over 2. The inverse function is asking us what angle has a sine of square root of 3 over 2. Well, there are lots of angles that have square root of 3 over 2 as their sine. Just looking at the unit circle, we can see that both pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 would both work. And any angle that's coterminal with those two angles, adding or subtracting 2 pi, would work as well. However, don't forget that when we defined our inverse sine function, we had to limit the domain on the original function to only have angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. to make the function one-to-one. -one. So when we take the inverse sine, there's only one answer that lies in our acceptable solution set, and that's pi over three. As another example, let's consider the inverse sine of negative one-half. Pi over six is our reference angle here, but it has a positive sine value. So we need the angles in the third or fourth quadrant that have pi over 6 reference angle. Again, we can consult our unit circle, and we find that 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 both have a sign of negative 1 half. However, our answers must lie in that restricted range set of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we need to find an angle coterminal with 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6 that lies in that range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. If we subtract 2 pi, we find that 11 pi over 6 minus 2 pi gives us negative pi over 6 which lies in our acceptable solution range. So the inverse sine of negative one half is equal to negative pi over six. Now let's consider the inverse cosine function. Suppose that we want to find the inverse cosine of the square root of two over two. We are looking for an angle that has the square root of 2 over 2 as its cosine. If we look at the unit circle, we see that both pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 would apply. However, only pi over 4 is in the allowed range for inverse cosine of 0 to pi. If we consider the inverse cosine of negative 1 half, we know that the cosine is negative in the second or third quadrant at 2 pi over 3 or at 4 pi over 3 or at any of its coterminal angles. The inverse cosine has an allowed range of solutions of 0 to pi. So only the 2 pi over 3 angle lies in that range. So the co inverse cosine of negative 1 half is equal to 2 pi over 3. When working with tangent, the following common tangent values will be good to recognize. You may even want to add some notes on your unit circle for these common results. The tangent of 0 is equal to 0. The tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. The tangent of pi over 6 is equal to the square root of 3 over 3, and the tangent of pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3. Of course, as we know, very few angles are actually exactly represented in our unit circle, so we will frequently need to refer to our calculators for the results. The calculator has the inverse functions precisely defined, so it will always return the single angle that lies in the restricted trig function domain. You don't need to make any decisions. However, make sure you are aware of what mode your calculator is in. 
If you are in degree mode, the calculator will return an angle numbered between 90 degrees negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees for the inverse sine and inverse tangent, but an angle numbered between 0 degrees and 180 degrees for the inverse cosine. If you are in radian mode, the calculator will return an angle numbered between negative pi over 2 radians and pi over 2 radians. That is a number between about negative 1.5708 and 1.5708 for the inverse sine and the inverse tangent. But an angle numbered between 0 and pi that is a number between 0 and about 3.1416 for the inverse cosine when you're in radian mode. The inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent can be found on most calculators by using the second button up here, followed by the sine, cosine, or tangent button. I'll demonstrate here with the TI-84 to evaluate the following problems. First, I'll be in radian mode, then I'll be in degree mode. Pull out the calculator that you'll be using on your homework, um, and follow along. Make sure that you get the same answers that I do. Depending on your calculator, sometimes you need to enter the value first, then push the second sine, cosine, tangent, or whatever button. Okay, let's first look at, let's consider the following problems. The inverse cosine of 0.8, 0 0.8, the inverse sine of negative 0.9, the inverse cosine of negative 0.4, the inverse cosine of 1.2, and the inverse tangent of 1.2. So in radians, the inverse cosine, second cosine, of 0 0.8 is 0 0.644 or 0 0.6435 radians. Again, notice that's between 0 and the 1.57 in the first quadrant, as we would expect. The inverse sine of negative 0.9 gives me negative 1.1198 radians. Again, a fourth quadrant, um, the negative sine is or the sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, and we get a negative angle associated with that. The inverse cosine, oops, got into graphing mode there. The inverse cosine of negative 0.4 gives us a value in the second quadrant of 1.9823 radians. The inverse cosine of 1.2 is an error. Trick question. The inverse cosine has a domain just between negative 1 and 1. The only values the cosine can make. So the inverse cosine of 1.2 is impossible. The impossible. The inverse tangent of 1.2, however, is possible. Since its domain is all real numbers, and we get 0.8761 radians. Again, we can find if we want to n switch to degree mode,
we are now going to find all of our inverse trig functions results given in degrees. The inverse cosine of 0.8 is 36.9 degrees. The inverse sine of negative 0.9 gives me negative 64.1 degrees or 64.2. The inverse cosine of negative 0.4 gives me 113.6 degrees in the second quadrant where the cosine is negative. And then the inverse cosine of 1.2 of course should still be impossible. It is. But the inverse tangent of 1.2 Oops. Inverse tangent of 1.2 gives us 50.194, or we'll just say 50.2 degrees when in degree mode. In summary, the answer to an inverse trig function is always an angle, but the angle that's chosen needs to lie in the restricted domain of our trig function which is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for the inverse sine and inverse tangent and 0 to pi for the inverse cosine. There is only one possible correct answer to any inverse trigonometry question.